actually given me this opportunity to come out. It's been a few years since I've been out to, to speak somewhere, and um, that's partially my fault. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I was, uh, I feel like I, I was called into the ministry a while back, and, um, you know, people tend to drag their feet. You talked about that in Sunday school this morning. You know, Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. Uh, and uh, and so as, as Christians, we drag our feet a lot. And I, my dad's a pastor in Ritchie County. And I've been talking to him about it. And I said, you know, what? when do I know it's a, it's a true calling? Or if it's just me thinking that I want to do something? And he said, well, if the Lord never leaves you alone. And I've, uh, he's been nagging me for quite some time. So... Uh, so I'm, I'm blessed to be able to have this opportunity to come out and, and preach God's word to you. Um, who in here is patriotic? That's good. If you're not, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm a combat vet. Uh, I'm very patriotic. And so uh, when I see things in this country that, that are not, I tend to, it ruffles my feathers a little bit. And um, so I'm going to I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to pray, and then I'll get into the message. Okay. So section four of the flag code, the United States flag code states the pledge of allegiance of the United States, and then and then it states the pledge, and it said it should be rendered by standing at attention, facing the flag with your right hand over your heart. When not in uniform, men should remove any non-religious headdresses and should hold it in their right hand, place it on their shoulders so their hand is over their heart. And persons in uniform should remain silent, face the flag, and render a military salute. Okay, let's pray. Father, I uh, once again, I thank you for this opportunity uh, to be able to, to share your word not my word, but your word. Father, I ask that, uh, that uh, I hide behind the cross so you shine forth. Uh, Lord, be with uh, Pastor Toby and, and Christina as they are away. Give them safety and travels. Be with this congregation. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, on September 11th, I'm going to give you a little back history about me. September 11, 2001. We all know what happened that day. I was lying in bed because I was, at that time, a typical wild child preacher's boy. And I, uh, I heard the phone ring, and it was my aunt. And she said, we're being attacked. And I thought, Ritchie County? Being attacked? So I, she said, no, no, turn the TV on. So I turned the TV on and saw the second plane hit. Later that day, I, uh, I stewed around for a while, and then later that day I drove in the, to the recruiter's office. and They were watching TV, and I went in, and that's when I started the process to join the U.S. military. In 2005, I went to Iraq. The things that I had to do and experience uh, were life-changing, and to this day they bother me. Um, for me, I had to desensitize myself to war and the aspects of war. I had, I had to make myself watch things so that I could have such a an anger towards these people that I could take another's life. And as Christians, I feel that we have desensitized ourselves uh, to sin. We have made our own rules to follow. We have twisted the word of God to make it fit our sinful nature. 
You know, respect for my country is something I take great pride in, like I said. And it kills me to see people not stand for the pledge or not stand for the national anthem. That's why, personally, I don't care if I watch the Super Bowl. Um, I like football, too. And I hate it. Uh, and it frustrates me to in past administrations to see leaders of our country making deals with terrorists yes. in the world. Yes. You know, who makes deals with terrorists? That's other terrorists. Respect for my God is something I take greater pride in. Yes, amen. I read about homosexuals talking about the love of God and that Christians that speak against it are hypocrites and haters. Mm -hmm. That we need to look at our own life and evaluate our own sin instead of looking at theirs. And that is true. You know, we need to evaluate ourselves. The fact is, is that we are all sinners in need of a Savior. I've done so many things in my lifetime, and I'm only 37. Don't let the gray hair fool you. <laughs> uh, I've done so many things that have almost cost my now 16 years of marriage. And, and all of that is, is that, it is past. Because at the moment that I surrendered to Jesus Christ, that stuff was washed away. <coughs> You know, before I was saved, uh, I would say that I had a, uh, I always say that I had a one-way ticket to hell. And after I surrendered my life, God took that ticket and ripped it up. So the fact is, you know, and, I, and, the, and there's a multitude of sins, you know, so don't get me wrong, I'm talking about Right here, I'm talking about homosexuality. There's a lot of different sins in the, in the world. But the fact is, is that homosexuality is a sin. Yes. It's in the Bible. Yes. We are all born, I, I believe we are all born with, with one or more tendencies that we struggle with at a sin. Mine is not the same as yours or yours. And so some people, I believe, have that tendency to sin in that manner. I agree. And it's up to them to choose whether or not they want to live in that sin or follow Christ. And they may never get married. But you can, you can overcome it with God's help. Yes. You know, mine that I struggle with is anger. And a lot of that comes from being a combat veteran. Mm -hmm. I have a short fuse. I had, a, I had a short fuse before I went in the military, and then it just got a little shorter. And I keep praying that God will make it a little longer. <laughs> but I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins, and therefore I am forgiven. I have turned away from that sin, and that doesn't mean that I'll never do it again. That doesn't mean that I don't get mad and, and say things that I may regret saying to somebody out of the heat of the moment, but I recognize it. I turn to God and then ask for forgiveness from whomever that may have been and to God. You know, if you read in the Bible about David. I, growing up, you know, my dad's been a pastor since 1989. So he has been my pastor since 1989. And 
growing up, he always talked about David and how David was after God's own heart, going on and on and on and on about how great David was. And I kept thinking, David messed up a lot. You know, but if you read the book of Psalms, David also cries out to God a lot. And you don't see David going going back to the same sins that he's just cried out about. So, you know, it took me getting a little older to figure out that that it, it doesn't mean that you're not going to do things. It's, it's a matter of, of repenting and going back to him. Um, you cannot debate sin with a non-Christian because they don't understand. Um, you had that when Ken Ham, you guys know who Ken Ham is? And he had that debate with Bill Nye, the science guy. Okay? But once you take, you can't take the Bible, a Christian can't take the Bible out of the argument because that is our foundation. Okay? And Bill Nye didn't want the Bible in it because he wanted to go strictly off of science. So what was done at that debate was absolutely nothing. You, you, can't, you cannot debate sin with a non-Christian. So... So going back to homosexuality, if, if you look at Romans 1, 26 and 27, you guys don't have to turn. I've got it right here and I'm going to be jumping around a little bit. But it says, for this reason, God gave, gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that were contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up their natural relations to women who were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9, it says, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexual immoral nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality. It clearly says it's a sin. If you claim that you are a Christian, the Bible says in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created. If you believe that, then you should have no doubt that the rest of the Bible is true. Jonah getting swallowed by a fish. It seems like it's a pretty far-fetched story. But God was the one narrating that. And if God created, then you shouldn't have a, an issue believing that. God does not change his mind. So if that's true, if God created and he doesn't change his mind, then he doesn't change his mind about the today sins of the world that the churches are allowing into, into the sanctuaries. Now don't get me wrong. I'm not going to turn away anyone. Okay? But churches today are allowing people that are actively in sin to have leadership positions and to be active in the church and and that that is where you know you see churches divide and you're seeing that right now um, you know so I know that this sounds like a big rant on homosexuality and I, I apologize for that because most of the time when you have I mean I don't apologize for speaking the truth I just most of the time when you have a, a congregation like this, I'm preaching to the choir. But some people don't. Some people throughout their life just kind of like, well, 
you know, maybe this is okay or maybe that's okay. They, and so they, they question a little bit because what Satan does is Satan takes a little bit of truth and then adds a lot of lie. And so if, you, if he can persuade you to get on that teeter-totter with on the truth, God is love. You got to love everyone. You got to accept everyone. Then you're going to, your, your ways of thinking will change. So God is love. That, that we all know. But, God, but don't forget truth. Truth hurts. Sin is real. But through God's mercy, grace, and love his, and His forgiveness, we can have peace. I was approached, my, my kids, I've got three children, and they played on a t-ball team. The coach of the t-ball team was a lesbian. You know, you're in a community that that is in, and sometimes you can't help it to, to rub up against people. And she asked me, because she knew on Wednesdays, Wednesday evening, we left practice early because we were going to church. If they had a game on Sunday, a rescheduled game on Sunday, we didn't play because we were going to church. So she approached me. You don't always have to say what you feel and what you believe. You, you know, people will know that you're a follower by your actions. Okay? So she approached me and she said, God is all love. And if that is true, then it does not matter what sexual orientation we are. And so my rebuttal was, now listen, I just said you cannot argue sin with a non-Christian. But now she claims to be a Christian, okay? And she's in a church right now that accepts that, okay? So, so my rebuttal was this. Do you have children? And she says, you know I do. Do they have rules? She says, yes. I said, what happens if your son breaks the rules? She said, he gets punished. I said, do you still love him unconditionally? She said, of course I do. I said, that's the same for God. He has rules, and it is clear in the Bible what they are, and if we do not follow them, we will be punished. If we know the rules and disobey them, not out of ignorance, but just because we don't think that they should apply to us, then are we really saved? Now, we agree to disagree. And I still show her love, but when she asks, I'm going to speak truth. She knows where I stand, and I know where she stands, and I keep praying for her, and maybe one of these days she'll see the light. But it is not, it is not for us to, to save people. Okay? So many times Christians are like, well, I led that person to Christ, or I did this for the, you know, and it's not you. You're just a vessel, and you're, you're being guided, and, and it's up to God to save. It's up to us to, to show God's love and God's truth and disciple them. But it's not up to us. We we plant the seed, and 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 we leave, <laughs> you know. And it's up to God to to get conviction. Okay. So, as Christians, we must remember: love the sinner, hate the sin. Mark thir thirteen thirty and thirty one says, "You shall love the Lord with all your heart." and with all your soul, and with all your mind. 
and with all your strength. Verse 31 is, and the second thing is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So somebody that's unsaved, I mean, we've got so major issues in, in the Christian church. Abortion. Homosexuality. You know, I've even seen churches that have now put a female as God, you know, instead of, you know, anyway. And, and so when you come across somebody that is unsaved, that say had an abortion, and they come up to you and, and you start just telling them truth, that's not going to get them in the door. Okay? There's where you show love and compassion. And you have to bring them in. And then as, as they grow along, and, and if they get saved, then the Holy Spirit will convict them on, on those things. And, and with, with the Holy Spirit and you guiding them and directing them, then, then they'll, they'll know what's right and wrong. But you're not going to get it right off the bat. So, as Christians, if we see another Christian that is in sin, then in Matthew 18, 15, and 17, it says, lay it out for us. It, it, it lays it out for us. And it, it says, if your brother's sin, go to, go to him and share his fault in private. Okay? That doesn't mean you, you got to get up here and say, brother, I know what you did. You know, go to him in private. If he listens to you, you have won your brother. But if he doesn't listen to you, take one or two more with you. So that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every fact may be confirmed. If he refuses to listen to them, then you need to tell the church. And if he refuses to listen to the church, then uh, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. I always like how they put tax collector and things like that. Everybody loves taxes, right? Um, you know, so as, as believers, as a body of believers, it is our responsibility to hold each other accountable. And basically, that's what that scripture is. And so if I go to another brother in the Lord, he may not know that what he was doing was wrong. And so he could continually keep doing that. And if I'm like, whoa, I just need to show him love and I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Well, that he's going to continually do that. Somebody else is going to see him do that and say, hey, he's a Christian, so it must be okay. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to, uh, you see what I mean? So, like I said, to, to confront a non-Christian is, is not effective when you're speaking truth. They are ignorant to what is right. It would be like them telling you that your belief isn't right. Now, if they ask, then you speak the truth. You know, uh, well, I, I actually have speak the truth in love. Okay? Don't just speak truth. you got to do it in love. So one of my favorite scriptures, well, I'll tell you, and this is kind of a sidebar, my favorite, favorite scripture is John 11.35. You guys know what that is? Jesus wept. You want to know why that's my favorite scripture? Because Jesus knew what was going to happen in the end of that story. He knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. But he wept. So as a tough military guy that tries not to show emotion, 
I take, I take great comfort in that scripture because, hey, God's got this, and it's okay if I cry. That, so anyway, that's a sidebar. As people will say, that one's for free. So another, the, another group of Scripture that, that's my favorite is John 21. And John 21 is the reinstatement of Peter. And I don't know if any of you have done a word study on that set of Scripture, but I'm going to break it down to you. So Peter's out. I love Peter because Peter messes up all the time, and I, I, I can relate to him, you know. So Peter's out back fishing again. Jesus comes to him. And Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, you know I love you. And he says, feed my lambs or feed my sheep, one or, one or the other. And then he says again, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, Jesus, you know I love you. And then the third time, he comes back and says it again. And I was always like, you know, well, that must have just been because he denied him three times and he was reinstating him because of all times that he denied him. But if you do a word study, has anybody done a word study on it? Okay. If you do a word study, Jesus says, Peter, do you agape me? Which is an unconditional love. And Peter says, you know I phileo you as a brotherly love. And the second time he comes back and says, do you agape me? And Peter says, you know I phileo you. And on the third time, Jesus comes down to Peter's level and said, Peter, do you phileo me? Peter says, you know, he was, he's grief stricken because he knew he couldn't get up to God's level. To Jesus' level and then he says I, you know I phileo you so what does that mean you got to get in the trenches we have to go to where the sinners are we pray that that God will bring people into the church well that's great but who's bringing them outreach is so important so, it was funny, in Sunday school, you mentioned Billy Graham. If Billy Graham came in here and shared that message, would it be received? So this is the heart of my message, and this is why we have the issues that we do today, okay? I watched a video not too long ago about evangelism today versus when Billy Graham was evangelizing. The man said that Billy Graham was not, would not be effective today. And I was like, whoa. You know, that's like saying Elvis Presley wasn't the king. And so he explained. Early in this, early in the country's history, we had an Acts 2 culture. And in chapter Acts 2 is the day of Pentecost. And and when they were speaking at the day of Pentecost, they were speaking and explaining to the Jews. Okay? The Jews had a long history, a foundation to build upon. He didn't have to start from scratch. And so, so it was accepted a little bit more because they could understand. They knew the, the law. They knew the prophecies. They knew the things. So when he started talking about Jesus Christ, they were more receptive because they had that foundation. That's Acts chapter 2. Okay? But what we are today is an Acts 17 culture. And that was Paul... Uh, Paul had to build the foundation to present the gospel. 
because in Athens they didn't know anything about God um, they had they had a, a passed a, an altar with an inscription that said to the unknown God that was their uh, and, and so we have people in this country that now have no foundation so if Billy Graham was to come and speak and speak the gospel of Christ you've got people that say well I don't know if in the beginning God created or Jonah couldn't have been swallowed by a big fish you know that's got to be that they question that which is the foundation of Jesus Christ you know so you have to approach your evangelism in a different way than what we did and I and I think going back it's been years of it's been years of um, like I said before we want to preach love we get people in we get people to the altar we get people that accept Christ and then they leave and then we go okay you go here and now we say okay you're ready all right let's come up here and I we never talk to this guy again so he's he's left by himself to learn a little bit of truth a lot of lie he's he is doing things out of ignorance and it is the Christians to to take them under our wing and so we as Christians have have helped to make this culture an Acts 17 culture so what should we do another uh, a favorite um, book of the Bible of mine is James because I'm kind of uh, I'm not all that smart and James he lays her out I mean it's it's uh, very to the point and uh, and so in James chapter 1 verses 5 and 6 it says if any of you lack wisdom he should ask God who gives generously to all without fault and it will be given to him but when he asks he must believe and not, and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave in the sea blown and tossed by the wind so we should seek wisdom when we are approached with things and God will give it to us so we pray for opportunities to show love, truth, and grace. We should pray for that for everyone we meet. We should be praying that the Lord gives us one more day to live for Him as His example. Pleading to the Lord that people's hearts will open up and be receptive. Not everyone will come to know Jesus. In Acts 2 and Acts 17, people rejected the word. But don't live your life sorrowful because when given the opportunity, you chose not to share. So, a real li I, I like to do real life examples, okay? And, um, and I'm almost done. But real life examples, my mother and father-in-law old school they were grown up in this Christian foundation the, Amer the American culture even if you wasn't a Christian knew right or wrong okay so they grew up in this now my father-in-law is a recovering alcoholic who beat my mother-in-law okay we would go to their the family functions they would have alcohol and all that stuff um, but they always asked me to pray 
and when I prayed, I always asked that the that the, the Lord would open up hearts and minds of the people in that room. And they, so they knew it. They knew I was praying for them. And it wasn't. Um, it was just a few years ago. I got a uh, I got a message from my father in law. They started going to church. He quit drinking. He went to jail. I mean, he you know. So it was one of those life altering you know what what am I going to do moments. They start going to church. So for Christmas, I got them Bibles. They didn't have a Bible. So I got them each Bibles. I got them a Strong's Concordance. Um, I got them, you know, things to help them study. And boy, did he have a lot of questions. And boy, did I not have all the answers. So I called Dad. Hey, Don's asking me this. What do I need to tell him? You know, and, and so to this day, they are still going, they're still involved in church. Okay? But Don... Don had kids from a previous marriage. One of those children had two young children. They didn't go to church because Don didn't go to church at that time. So they lost that value. They they turned she was an Act 17 culture. She got cancer. 20 something years old. Got cancer. And I, I thought, man, you know, I didn't know her very well. And I thought I, I would be a horrible Christian person if I did not reach out to her. And so I did. And she was receptive, did not accept at that moment. She said, yeah, I've heard that before. And I said, well, you know, we knew that this was it. We knew that she was, she didn't have very long to live. I don't know what if she decided what she decided and that's when I go back to and I struggled with that but that's when I go back to it's not our job to save people it's our job to share the gospel and to let them feel the conviction and turn to him I pray that she did now her kids are being raised by my father and mother-in-law and so they are going to church so they will have a whole different aspect of life. So we don't know what's going to happen when it's going to happen. Middle of December, my 35-year-old wife had a heart attack. Wasn't expecting that. She got this virus that was going around, and it attacked her heart. She had a heart attack. So for the last two months we've been going back and forth to cardiologists we've been you know it's been something I'm the one that always has health issues and she's the one that's healthy you know <laughs> so the roles were reversed maybe it's a learning experience for me maybe God's pointing me in a direction that I should should go in but we did we didn't know she could have died right then we don't know 35 years old Kobe Bryant who hasn't heard of that yet you don't know. He's one of those iconic people that you think are going to live forever. You don't know. My brother's my brother's sister-in-law. Her son was just discharged from the Marines on a medical discharge. That's it's weird how things go in around. <clears throat> driving back home, they live in the Carolinas. Driving back home, they wreck. This just happened. My brother's down in, down there now. They wreck, spin on their side, semi hits at. He's dead. She's not out of the woods yet. You don't know. You don't know when. You don't know where. You don't know how. You know it's going to happen sometime unless God comes back and takes us first. <laughs> but we got to do what we can 
why we're here. So that when we enter the gates, he says, welcome, good and faithful servant. So Jesus died for you that you may live. So live for him today. Okay, that's all I have for today. I don't know what how long Toby normally preaches, but um, so uh, I'm going to close the service. I don't do you do you have a closing song that you do? Okay, okay. Well, we don't have to. I, I'll go with whatever flow you guys normally go in. Um. You know, so what I'll do is this. I'm going to pray. If you feel led to come to the altar today, you come on up. Um, if you like for me to pray for you or with you, get a hold of me, and, and I'll stop praying here, and I'll go there. <laughs> okay? So, um, you know, I hope that God's word has been spoken today, and, and I hope it wasn't too jumbled. And, and moving around but you know when you get opportunities to speak just every little so often you just kind of want to go Bleh, and and just give all the information you can right off the bat you know and so um, and so I hope that that the word was was received and, and uh, so let's pray father you are a great God you are the creator God. If you were not creator, that is one attribute that you can't take away and still be God. And so you are the creator. And we thank you for that. We thank you, Father, for all of the opportunities that you give us throughout life to share your word, present the gospel to people that, that have never heard it before. Father, we ask that you continue to be with us as we go about this world and we are brushed up against sin every day. Help us to, to know what is truth and what is a lie. Help us to be able to see that. Help us to be able to speak love but also speak truth. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.